Welcome everyone to Enclave. We're very happy to have Liz Willis reading today. And Ray will be making the introduction. Ray, who needs no introduction, uh, and I will give her a short introduction. She has published 15 books of poetry, uh, many with Wesleyan, it says on the back of the Wesleyan book cover, uh, including Versed, which won a Pulitzer and a National Critics Book Award. She has a new book, Conjure, and a few new chapbooks. So, um, and recently poems in Harper's, thanks to Ben Lerner. So here's Ray. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've been told that I'm not that I'm not very loud. There's something wrong with my speaker. So I'm going to try to really project. So if I look strange, then you can assume that's why. So Liz Willis, Elizabeth Willis, I'm going to never know exactly how to how to call you today. But Elizabeth Willis, who, as it happened, was born in Bahrain, something I've never really heard about, has taught at Wesleyan, Brown, and now the Iowa Writers Workshop. She is the author of six volumes of poetry, if I'm counting correctly, Second Law, the Human Abstract, which was a National Poetry Series winner, Turneresque, published by our dear Burning Deck, Meteoric Flowers, I love that title, a dress from Wesleyan, and a live new and selected poems from the New York Review of Books Press. Her scholarly work has focused on Lorene Niedecker, and she is the editor of Radical Vernacular, another title I love, an anthology of essays on Niedecker's work. Liz has been recognized with a California Arts Council Fellowship, a Howard Foundation grant, a Penn New England grant, and a Guggenheim Fellowship. I hate to keep listing, st staying in list mode, but, but before I get to my own remarks, I just have to mention that Elizabeth Willis has drawn praise from a truly enviable group of poets, for example, Susan Howe has called her work terse, precise, ecstatic, and luminous. I'm waiting for someone to say that about me. Anne Lauderbeck says she, quote, recovers the originating lyric impulse into a haunting contemporary song. And Cole Swenson says, what drives Willis's incisive commentary into poetry are her gorgeous lines. So, wow, those comments are a hard act to follow. Looking over Liz's books, one thing that struck me is how varied they are. Many poets find a style or a mode and stick to it. Elizabeth seems to keep experimenting, moving from, say, the loose-knit and wide-ranging prose poems of meteoric flowers to bold, direct list poems such as The Witch, in Alive, which discusses ways in which witches might be recognized across the centuries. She combines historical and scientific research with a commitment to lyric. Her work is so various that whatever I say next might contradict what I said last and still be true. But I think at the heart of it is a desire to break the linearity of time. She has written that the language of progress tyrannizes poetry. Hers is an anti-teleological project. In her words, she sends a modern letter from antiquity. In her poems, past and present inform and trouble one another, hybridizing sensibilities and styles. Here an impulse toward the romantic sublime is caught in a series of mysterious, hermetically sealed flasks where, to quote her again, the present was a relic of a past I was older than. Taking its language, I became an abridgment of whatever I contained. I like those last two lines stuck with me. I kept feeling like, yeah, I'm an abridgment of whatever I contained too. <laughs> so I know the feeling. So it's a long time since I've heard Liz read and I can't wait to see, to hear what comes next. Here's Liz. 
Thank you, Ray, and thank you, Jean. Um, to state what I hope is completely obvious, it's um, it's so great to see you. Um, yeah, uh, amazing to see you. I love the um, concept of the enclave in the in the context of you know what we've all been experiencing, um, just as a way of thinking about shared fate and. Um, companionship and um, and also uh, like celebrating an inside. I've, I've been thinking a lot about the work of a, um, Raphael Leonardo Black, who a lot of people think of as an outsider artist, but he was really explicitly um, making an inside with mm -hmm. his art. So it was really about celebrating um, kind of relation and uh, intertext and all of that. Um, and he died of COVID earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually um, wanted to begin by playing um, a kind of longish poem um, by Lewis Warsh. Um, about 10 years ago at a reading, he gave me a CD that was um, published by Ugly Duckling. <clears throat> and, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I, I thought I knew his work pretty well, and I, I was just kind of blown away by the ambition and, um, and power of, of this text. So um, I wanted to start with that. So um, somebody send me a message if, it's, if the sound isn't going through. Um. <laughs> The origin of the world. The Outer Banks. You could say that characters in the Bible were obsessed with hiding their nakedness. I touch the leg of the table with the toe of my foot. The child searches in a drawer for the damaged toy. Feelings of love were impaired by excessive anxiety. I put in my order for the butcher before it gets too late and the holidays are upon us or so they say. You can wear the same clothing every day and no one cares. She complains that she spends too much time making herself beautiful while he just picks up the clothing he wore yesterday from the floor and doesn't even bother washing his face or combing his hair. I hear a rooster cry at dawn from someone's roof. I experience an epiphany. I'm not what you might call handy. There's a dead seal on the beach and a fishing boat on the horizon. The guy downstairs complains about a leak when I take a shower. Some people don't mind if you take them for granted. She can't break up with her boyfriend until she knows she has another waiting in the wings. It's hard to love anyone who holds a grudge. I wear my compromises over my mask. My deficiencies won't add up. No ice, no drink. The angles of night toss their dilapidated forms over my shoulders like a Ukrainian shawl. Women with kerchiefs, a family with stroller, or equestrian thoughts ride into the sunset. Think of A's love for B in terms of the needs of A, for whom B provides the promise of immediate gratification. The sun goes down in my mirror where I address myself not as I, but as a you who exists outside me and can't think. I thought I'd take some time out from my work to make a call, but as soon as I heard her voice, I hung up. A 16-year-old student has been charged as an adult with attempted murder and unlawful use of a weapon in the shooting of a teacher who ordered him to stop smoking. Seek out a stranger to alleviate desire, but don't call her back. She might be busy tonight. It seems like you might as well have a drink to loosen you up. In the summer of 1964, I lived in a bungalow in Far Rockaway with my girlfriend, her father, and her baby. She's not here now. She's never here. Who should I say called? <laughs> it strikes me, it strikes me that I repeat everything twice in my life and keep repeating without acknowledging my mistakes. Some people keep love at a distance because they're frightened of being hurt, but it's hard to be on the outside looking in at your own life or perpetually standing on the edge of things with nowhere to go. We thought the matinee began at three, but when we arrived, it was intermission. 
people meet on a blind date and eventually get married for the sake of for the sake of discretion. My parents wanted me to. You find out what interests you, but don't do it, not yet, anyway, since it's more interesting to put it all off till tomorrow, to let things slide, to trap the thought in its beauty like a tiger in a cage and watch it climb the walls and disfigure itself out of sheer helplessness. You map out a theory of knowledge and watch it dissolve like an integer divided by itself, but turned on their sides, the numbers look like songs. You pretend to work hard so others will leave you alone. You talk to strangers and megalomaniacs. You read books you read before. You prefer pieces of paper with words on them to people, but that phase passes. You identify with the tree outside your window. All my family makes a home here, but the branches are obscure, even to me. You sing a judicious symphony like a necklace of amber beads. A half-dressed man leans out, the, leans out the window and shouts to his girlfriend on the sidewalk. A police car with a loudspeaker announces the reward for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of a person who shot a policeman. I was working at the library at Columbia University and we met during my lunch hour on the steps of Grant's tomb. Tumblers on the tray bisect the light of the immigrant wafer which we place on the tongue to taste the snow, the rain, and the spray which from yonder fountain alights on our faces. There's a bracelet close to her skin that resembles ivy, but if I touch it, I fear my heart might grow numb. The specialty of the house wasn't on the menu, but you could request it from the waiter, the waitress, or maitre d' who would bow down and kiss your knees out of a desire to give pleasure. Love is no solution to fear the touch of a hand in the dark, nor the flowers, nor the beating of the wings against the screen. A job that represses your sexual instincts may be just what you need. Don't wait up for me is something I might have said, but when I returned, the bed was a talisman of crumbs and plaster. They say there was a lot of rain and possible flooding before we came. They tell us we brought the bad weather with us. Tell us what remains of desire as you know it. All the swings in the park are taken, all the benches broken. Let's sit here. There's a jail across the border where they'll take us when we get out of hand and from which we can see the evening star, a symbol of the persistence of desire. All they can do is torture us, behold us in wonder at our beauty, desiring to subjugate us because we're so unlike them in our sweet ways and even our most muddled intuitions are wiser than the vows of militancy they concoct. I go to the prison of the practical world to take care of business. I look up my name in the index, but it isn't listed. She was born and died before my time, but if she were alive today, we might have been pals. Bodies intermingle in a subway car. I stare covertly at legs, arms, eyes. I collect the wood and light the coals, but the wood is wet, and I have to use a whole box of blue tips just to keep it going. I plant the symbol of order, Neptune's trident on the opposite side of the archipelago and set forth under warm skies to a new terrain spellbound by the possibilities of the future and the shadows of the strange birds hanging motionless on the horizon. But I don't know the name of the boat I'm aboard. It's like a shadow of some other boat that went down in the storm off the Isle of Good Hope where promises of love were made only to be broken the next day where marriage vows were spoken in the shadows of an empty cathedral where friends and relatives gathered to wish you well. Could any one of them or you predict the spell of cold weather we've been having recently? All the objects in the world won't unlock the door to the present where daylight strips us of night's desire and a voice riding the airways whispers into the fog, don't lose heart. When I close my eyes, I can see the after image of the light of the candle, like the face in a dream. You are my shadow. So that was, that was Lewis, who I'm going to miss a lot. Um, and that's the trouble with starting with a great poem, is having to follow it. Um, but I thought I would um, read a few poems that kind of have to do in some way with, um, with companionship. And um, so anyway, this poem is for uh, C.A. Conrad. 
what else in art do you pay for? To just sit down is so much with you. No one seems to pick up other people's garbage, but we do all that meaning under the surface of the dirty white collar. Pick up, pick up, pick up, I'm calling you. I'm the garbage now, the wall, what all of refuse. I try not to refuse anything except death, which I refuse with all my aching, hanked up heart. Have you read the letters he wrote his mother from the road? The shape is like my state of mind when I think of his heart aching in the dumbest material, no matter what he strapped against it. Fire can't touch a cold, cold heart. It's blue, is black, is green already, speaking to the brain in any way it can to ask forgiveness. My friend, I see the glitter in your wounds. There isn't a single word for what I want to say. To be loving anyone is to abhor all harm. I don't know how to show you the tree that saved my life or whose reflected light comes through the mouth of the crystal you brought me from the dirty patient earth. <clears throat> um, and, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> um, this is a poem from a few years back that, um, Lainey Brown uh, asked for in kind of preparation for the um, inauguration, <clears throat> the last inauguration, when a lot of us were in Washington. <clears throat> I just need some water. I don't think it's COVID, I think it's just all the indoor air. <clears throat> anyway, this is uh, The Americans. It goes without saying, something pounding while something else explodes. Can you say to the flower, bloom harder, bloom different? Now in the emergency, the process hurts even when it doesn't break the skin. What would it take to give you this finished feeling, 1492? A future beside itself, its death concurrent with other forms of discovery, the lake, the grass, the feeling in your hand. The national history of a species is not natural enough. To repeal this transaction, pick a side of the equation and unearth it with your heart. What is broken? What is just about to break? <clears throat> Okay. And um, a lot of this is um, kind of work in progress. Um, CA uh, Conrad actually wrote me a while back um, to ask about um, writing about death and like wanting sort of a paragraph and um, you know, this, this last, uh, um, decade has been such a time of be en endings and beginnings that um, it was uh, became longer than I thought it would. So um, I'll read a few um, sections of that. Are you guys with me? I feel like it's so weird to see you and not he hear your breathing. Okay. <laughs> so great. So great. <laughs> Zero. A few words about death I'll try not to get drunk on. A poem that lies down like a sentence about what it looks like, how it feels, what you were told. When my mother was gasping for breath, I was packing my car. When her mouth filled with blood, I was looking at my sister's face. When she tried to touch her hair, her hands were bound. When my father had already gone, she was seen in the air above the grass. The word precarious means literally previous to decay. We are on our way to carrion. We must, we do, but not yet. One foot moves from subject to object, one shoe in the air on its way down. A fathomless thing. This will be after me. I will be something else. While well, this is still this. At the sound of the bell, at the moment of impact, this thing squandered endlessly wrapping around your head until it ribbons out into ether. 
<clears throat> One. One spring, a large bird was beating and I was beneath it in the kind of precarious air an actor breathes when playing a corpse. I am trying not to play a corpse and I am trying not to trigger the pain for which I am no longer given opium. The space between the wing, beneath the wing is vast and cool and welcoming. I can feel the easiest thing is to walk into its breeze, to rest under its great tent and lay my feet Sorry, I have to just start that uh, stanza again. The space beneath the wing is vast and cool and welcoming. I can feel the easiest thing is to walk into its breeze, to rest under its great tent and lay my fever on a marble surface where I can finally lie weightless, wrapped in linen. The choice as I see it is to let go into this comfort or to find my way back into the mud to maintain a curiosity more powerful than pain, to surrender to the experiment. Lie down in the snow where someone will close your eyes for you and can cut off your rings and trade them for passage. On this side, I watch the clothes dry. I walk across the dew and wander in the law. I'm looking to the book for a different clock. I'm tagging you here, you're it. I feel my mouth open and close. I write for pages what I believe to be an account of my suffering, my thoughts, my insights. But when I leave the hospital and am kicking morphine, I see that there are no words on the page at all, only lines, a kind of handwritten fringe against the ruled page. I try to say her words, water in one form or another, the shell as it dries. I'm stopped with my mother on a clover leaf trying to read the map. She is younger than I am. If only the words wrote themselves, I wait for them, and so they do. I wait for you to come to me in order not to kill your delicate bloom. I wait over here in the cool. The art of the irreversible is the art of dying, the yes or no of light against a screen. You won't get anywhere without a broken heart, said the heartbroken. A poem cannot unwrite itself into a tree. It can only be forgotten, thrown into the wind. I am walking my hooves across the page on which I bleed out, the meadow into which all the stolen time has moved. I wanted to live among you here forever. This is what every poem says. To watch the leaf unfold left over right, to say, this is my art. If I'm going to die, I am going to die. Let me do this first. The crack uncurls, the rag is shaken, and a letter falls out with your name on it. The tunnel isn't white, your eyes aren't used to it. God is vast and black and art. Two, I draw my mother's outline, I trace it over and over. A trace becomes a meditation on a trace, it soothes me. It pictures more than anything I've written about her, my grief, her silences, her ailments, the ways she held me up and put me down, the ferocity of her desire to be seen, which led her to hide, her pride and defiance, her hurt feelings, her inattention, her barely buried rage at what she didn't understand. So palpable, her sadness, it soaked through everything, the endless rows of vegetables from which we pulled a plate of potato bug bugs on the plot someone had offered us when we were hurting. The shaping of the contour line to trace the actual air her body touched, my mother and her friend, my mother goofing at the shore of a lake, my mother pouting on her mother's lap beside the oversized birthday cake made at the one-room bakery above which my grandparents lived. My mother there for a moment, resistant to capture, frowning at her father, whose face has just disappeared behind the lens that was now reaching out to take her in. Her mother's face, exhausted and delicate, as if this three-year-old had just kicked its way out onto her lap, as if everything, including the sky, was about to close into the shutter. Three. A woman who cries is not essential personnel. Salt water conducts her to the brink. The first sign of illness is a dry mouth. My mouth has been dry for X, X, X days. Endless as an ocean is 
is not. That was the day I crossed the railroad to buy the fabric for your shirt. That was when I breathed in the open air and all our chambers. That was the day the birds appeared from everywhere, cedar wax wings a few feet from my hand. I lived in their habitat. You shared my room. I made a delicious soup. It snowed. Against the crooked imperfection of the word, this happened. We ate carelessly. I'd stitched this in the lining of your coat. Essential to whom? Essential to me. It was not the same stream. It was not America, not the same America, not the same twice, not the same again. A hundred times, a hundred days, it was not the same. We crossed the tracks from six feet down with the ghost dogs and the deer. We floated off and returned. This is how we sing as the ship goes down, said my species. This is what my species said. This is what we did until indifference left us. This is what we did when we were alive. We rationed what was left. It was Tuesday and then it was not. This is how we thought in the sweet, cool wake of what came next. Okay, that's that passage. Um, <clears throat> I thought maybe I'd just read a couple of um, like textual companion pieces. Um, this is a retranslation of Sonnet um, 73, Shakespeare's Sonnet 73 which you'll probably recognize somewhat. What a season to be clinging like this leaf to its rumpled dress. Well, of these beleaguered trees was sawn a cabinet in which to disappear like that old coin behind its American ear. A likeness useless as money in space would headless roll and still we'd burn to sun the leftward shore before disappearing to a newer emptiness of such a faint and lately quaking song as would in us be fired then put out to make an ashy pillow for that hoary uncle's head will not prop up that thing you thought had fed you everything it had to give where late the sweet birds sang it to anyone who'd hear. Um, and 2018 was the um, centenary of Frankenstein, the first edition of Frankenstein. So, um, and I actually am kind of attached to some of the um, spinoffs of Frankenstein, like the B movie versions of Frankenstein, um, too. Um, so, anyway, music for Frankenstein. Music for Frankenstein starts with fire flying down some arm and back out into the sky above the mortal grassy yard. Next door, the vibrating men are tender, hopeful. One has become a mother, the other a child. The mother's a doctor whose mouth girds up the thatchwork of a well-trimmed mustache. One hand touches the wide stylish belt that holds a child to a table. He's small and delicate, crouching beneath his own science, as when Abraham places Isaac on a pedestal momentarily and the boy suffers an amateur performance of will. One of them is writing his own primal scene, lying against the knowledge of an identifying scar. An electric body can look down with sympathy for the suffering of its boss. His page is clean, his mortality sharpened to a point of acceptance he can't quite see. An enormous baby with a mother on his lap. She's everything you can carry. This is the kind of woman he is, writing on the table with a special fork of genius, saying, you're in my house now, like God was once upon a time. <clears throat> Okay. Um, I think <laughs> I think that I'm just going to read one more piece, which is another kind of longish thing. Um, 
that is um, part of a kind of collaborative um, effort that um, I don't quite know uh, how to describe. <laughs> um, one of the one of the great pleasures of the last couple of years has been has been working as part of this group that was um, started by um, Ghazal Mozadek, a terrific poet whose work you should all know. Um, and uh, we met in the context of a translation symposium and um, decided to do something other than um, strict translation. And uh, what can I say about it? It, it began with um, a set of texts, talismanic texts, and um, it grew and developed. Uh, um, I, actually, I don't know, Gazal, are you here? May, maybe you should describe it. <laughs> I don't know if you can, can you unmute? Okay. Oh, I maybe can. Yes, we, we translated some uh, old talismanic texts. What should I say more? <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, it ended up being um, less uh, an act of translation, especially for those of us who um, who are like virtually monolingual. Um, and then over the summer, um, we were joined by um, uh, let's see, Ann Waldman, um, Sarah Riggs, who kind of organized us uh, with Tomas, um, Adania Shibli, uh, Safa Afati. Um, did I get all of us? Kave um, joined us later on. But anyway, um, I wanted to read just a couple of pieces of this because it has it has been um, uh, a kind of poetic companionship um, for the last stretch. So, um, all right. Am I reading too long? The, okay, this is this is sort of a chunk. So, apart, apart. Now I see in your presence how the text thinks through you. I, I should say maybe the the impulse of this that um, I think I found incredibly compelling was the notion that we could think about performative language um, going back to like the ancient roots of poetry as actually doing something. Um, so uh, there are all these ways that the text kind of moves between um, description and imperatives and solutions and uh, prayers and desire, maybe not prayers, something like a prayer. Um, uh, in a kind of talismanic sense, um, protection, that sort of thing. Okay, anyway, apart, apart. Now I see in your presence how the text thinks through you. This is the bush on fire. This is the river of what? The body carrying another on its back. This is a way of describing a life or a script. This is the pack you need to carry. Little boat aiming at the wide, wide shore of an ancient paisley of an industrial town. I see the eye and the body inside it upside down. The nail is a nail. The hand may be a weapon or an instrument, as a tree may tell the story of a tree or a lesson in adornment, not everything, but what we have. A colonial pattern continues to exert itself in the honey of my mother tongue, so we ask of the translator, the task of the agitator. Her words are in the eye of the storm that has a name. Melissa, come quickly, a fragile desperation where I can't read the hand. In this way, the end is known before the beginning. We set a tent in the abdomen of the page, our fire in the heart. Its hands are our hands. Yes, we are women. Who wants to know? Ukt Habibi, Sherami, I come to the barn like the animal I am, light shaking into dark. This is where we are in the multiverse. We must all go to hell as a species. So, beloved sister, what brings you to earth today? Like the fist of a flower or the fire that swings a bell, what we think of as remediation is also the well-being of the state. Consequences aside, state of what, of whom, state of earthly design, for the mortal condition. The right to obscurity in the age of translation, the right to opacity in the age of surveillance, the apologetic miracle is such a thing. This hour, 
all of it, walks inside her, she, that which is obscure, she, eating with her hand. I chill the air with ice around her fever. I clean the bowl that bathes her. I close the wound in its chest. I lift his body from the street and place it across my wings. May the landlord return the rent. May she live in my heart forever. May she have him as much as she likes. May the slaver drown himself. May the girl at the fountain inherit the orchard. May she lie down in a beautiful opera in which she doesn't have to die. May the hinge swing open like a sun. May our alliance break the system. May our hands warm with labor. May her daughters be artists. May your neck be free. May breath fill your lungs. May mercy inhabit. May the calf be spared. May this sound release you from arrest. May the soldiers be temporarily blinded. May the enemy lie down unbuttoned as cattle before an eclipse. May the hour catch fire out of the unreadable right shoe. Crimson, unreadable day, unreadable night. I leave her my chickens, my hay, my foxes. She carries the number like a child. We leave her the key to the bus. My nerves are in the east, my reason in the west. She comes to you as an insect laces up the leaves. Heaven is plural, as when I come to her like the head of Holofernes in her dream. My heavens, we are just getting started. Peel the fruit clockwise in a single strip and make a tea of it. Write this down. Can you distinguish between creation and invention, the head and the hat? Can you draw the border as you remember it, host and guest, as in a virus, ghost and rest? I see a long and joyful life for the afflicted. Suzanne, you goose, where on earth did you come from? As she is in heaven. To pray to a mother is as natural as corn. Step into, then out of this shoe. St. Lorene, protect us, clear the deck. Take all references to money out of this room, write this down. Clear the desk of everything but friendship. Alliance is mineral, the ferocity of all suffrage. The sound of scissors in London is a severing of trauma. I am going now, it says translated by fire, but I hold your hand. Lock, then unlock the door. Open the blind, then the window. Be careful what you find. Step out, step into, step across the uncut grass. Safa, you are telling me this is the way. Anne, I brought this to you with all my trust. Sarah, you came before. Adania, you were waiting at the border. Ghazal, thank God how you flew. A poem assembles this house. A singular they, a plural I on the shore at sea. A cone like a hat appears in the morning morning outside my door. There is no God but this and international orange. Put all else away from you. We are on this side of the border because we are with you, Adania. Unarmored word from one mouth to another. Write this down. May his bowels be immovable until he dies of his own poison. May the sharpness of his words cut his throat in the night. May he find no surrogate. May his teeth crumble. May the grin of the dollar sign burn his sulfurous lawn. May a garden grow above it. May the olive transform sulfur into sweetness, its noise into a whisper. May your feet say to the silence, I am here. In my dream, the girls escape. In my dream, that swerves. In this dream, my mother is alive in every cell of my body. The salt is our radio, the salt of the body. I see you in the black box of the future in which we are together, face to face, unbroken. That's that.